I'm using hotkeys for pasting in place. It's a good one to get used to. It's just your usual hotkey, but you'd be holding down the shift key as well. Okay, so now we've got uh, three of the same symbol. Uh, let's go and double click inside of one of them. Again, we're gonna be changing all of them um, by doing this. And uh, since I double clicked, again, the indication here is that uh, this is kind of grayed out. Uh, since I double clicked inside of here, I'm now editing uh, the timeline for only this symbol. Okay, so if I were to write, or if I, if I were to note this layer as, let's say, my text, okay, and then dive back up here to scene one, you're going to see that uh, now we're back to seeing logo and uh, this kind of um, not perfectly named layer two. Let's call this uh, menu, um, let's call it like all menu item. Okay. All right, so let's dive back inside of here, my text, and let's create uh, two more layers. This one is going to be called sound, and this one is going to be called highlights, or highlight. And we want to add a few more frames in here. Um, so let's go ahead and just, just select out as many as you want. We're really only going to be using a couple of them. But if you just want the freedom, uh, you can put in more than one or two frames and you can hit F5 here or you can go to insert frame and that just makes it so that hey look at that I can now scrub this little guy across the timeline I'm not stuck on frame one uh, I am stuck with however many frames I inserted in there so if I just wanted to be crazy and add a few more in hey look at that I hit F5 I can drag that guy out quite a bit uh, but uh, we actually need to put one more layer in here now that I think about it we're gonna call this uh, action script and since we have more than one frame, by default, uh, when the movie starts playing, this timeline is going to start playing with it. Okay, so we need to stop that from happening. All right, so go over here to actions, and if you haven't written any action script in your life, you're about to write some of uh, your first code. It's very simple though. Be sure that this um, frame is selected. You want to. Also, be sure when you're doing that that no other things are selected. Okay, just be sure that frame is the thing that's selected. Click stop. And that's an opening parentheses, a closing parentheses. If it's a little easier to see, I'll put a space in there. And then a semicolon. Okay, not, uh, not the regular colon. Okay, this is the semi one with the little comma looking guy at the bottom. And uh, close that out. Let's step back over here to um, the main timeline. And let's just test our movie for a second to make sure you wrote that code correctly. Uh, click on test movie. And you should see something that says exporting Swift. If you don't get any errors, that's perfect. Okay. If you do get an error, go and edit that code. <laughs> All right. Now diving back inside of here, uh, let's go and click... F6, which is going to put a keyframe right here, or you could go and uh, put in insert keyframe, okay? And at this point, uh, we could do any number of things. We could move it around, we could bump it up, we could move it left or right, uh, but this is basically just going to be what happens when you uh, roll over uh, the text. And I think to start things off, uh, let's just uh, change the color of it, okay? So... Um, now this will be easiest for me for right now. I'm going to drag the highlight layer underneath um, the text layer, and then well, let me first put in the highlight. So it's a little bit easier. So what I did there, which is uh, not obvious, so let me undo it. Is I hit F7, okay, which is going to put a blank keyframe in, or again you could right click and go over here to insert blank keyframe. And at this point, I'm going to take a square out. I'll leave the paint bucket as white. And I'm just gonna draw a square, okay? Uh, obviously now you're not seeing the text because there's a white square underneath white text. Uh, but now I'll go and select the text, go over here to tint it, or tint, and we're gonna make that uh, be all black. So our menu, when you roll over it, we'll just go from frame one to frame two. We haven't put that code in there yet, but that's uh, what's gonna appear to be what's happening. Okay, frame one, frame two, like that. And um, we don't actually need to put another stop action in here because when we write the code for this, we're going to say go to and stop um, frame two. All right. And I think we're at the point where we just need to do one more thing. Let's go ahead and put in another blank keyframe right here, F7. 
or right click, insert blank keyframe, and uh, we're gonna import in our audio. And I think the easiest way to do that is just to go find the audio. This could be an MP3 file, it could be an AIF file, it could be, even be a WAV file. And we're just gonna drag it onto the stage. Um, sometimes that will slow you down a little bit, but probably not as slow as going and uh, doing the other way, which I'll show you in a second, as soon as uh, the spinning beach ball stops spinning. And you really probably won't get any indication that um, you imported that file in there unless you go and click on that blank keyframe, go over here to name, and sure enough, there is that rollover sound, okay? Uh, alternatively, you could have gone to import, import to stage, or import to library, and then located the file on the desktop. But I'm a drag and drop guy, I like doing that. Okay, now, you do not want this sound uh, to be set to stream, okay? When your audio is streaming like this, that means that um, for you to hear it, you have to go and play through every one of these frames, okay? When it's set to event, all right, you're gonna hear the entire piece of audio, whether it's one second or if it's 30 seconds, as soon as you trigger this first keyframe right here. And I could even hit the return key and show you that. In fact, the return just gives you kind of a simple playback and you heard the entire audio, even though it wasn't that short. Um, maybe you did or did not hear it through my computer, but it's just a little pop, kind of a click noise, okay? All right, so be sure that is sent to event. Uh, if you wanna make any last minute um, changes to the audio, uh, you can go and pull down that custom and we could kind of half the volume. And um, this is your left channel, your right channel. And you can also put in another um, handle for editing that audio, so that would fade it out right there. You can't really hear much of a difference because really the audio stops at that point anyway. So it's got a little extra time in there. Okay, so um, actually let's just go and cancel that out. We'll leave it at uh, full blast. Uh, save out the file. And I think we are at the point now uh, where we can go back up here to frame one, and uh, let's uh, make the text different in each of these guys. So what you're gonna wanna do is duplicate uh, this symbol, all right? So we're gonna go over here to modify, duplicate symbol, and um, if you can imagine some sort of like red and blue siren going off in your head, that this is one of the, the most key things that as a new user, you're gonna wanna remember that duplicate symbol is not the same as copying and pasting, all right? So I'm gonna duplicate it, and a great sign that the things are kind of going successfully so far is that you see this thing that says duplicate symbol and it wants you to give you a new name for it. Okay, so we're gonna say menu two, click on okay. Uh, in the library, I've now got a menu two and a menu one. Of course, they look identical, but I can make changes to one and it's not gonna make changes to another, the other. And then uh, we also wanna go for this third one over here, a duplicate symbol. And again, this will be menu three. The siren should be going off in your head. Click OK. And sure enough, in the library, I've got that um, third menu item. Now, here's a problem. If I double click inside of here um, and I go to change this text, this text is shared among all three of those menus. Okay, so if I change this to menu or link two, now all of them are getting edited like that. And um, that's easier to correct, I think, than it is easier to go and duplicate every one of your um, symbols and then also go and add the audio back in, add the stop action, add the, the highlight in the background. So it's kind of a trade-off right here. We do need to go and, and kind of correct things um, in each one of these um, symbols now. But that's, is, that's very easy. Again, we're just gonna go over here to symbol, duplicate symbol, okay. And this time it's gonna be menu two. Now I can go double click inside of here and safely change this to uh, whatever I want, portfolio link two. Let's just call it um, uh, my hobbies. <laughs> it's kind of a lame menu item. Um, and you know, it's, it's something that we haven't talked about yet though, which is kind of obvious if you are familiar with any sort of um, text editing program. We're aligned in the middle right now. I think I'd actually prefer this to be lined to the uh, left. And then I'm gonna nudge that over a little bit. Uh, okay, let's jump back out here. Now, 
One other problem. Oh, look at that. If I go over to this frame, it's 